Caribbean Policy Development Center, in collaboration with the Institute of Gender and Development Studies, Nita Barry Unit, and UE TV, have partnered on a project titled Voices of Women, which seeks to highlight women from Barbados and the wider Caribbean, reflecting on their work in five areas, education, community development, development work, healthcare, and politics. Voices of Women play an integral part in ensuring that the oral history of the Caribbean woman is well remembered by allowing the chosen women to tell their stories from their views. Today on Voices of Women, we highlight Blondell Mullen. Hi, and welcome to UETV Voices of Women. My name is Leanne Worrell, Temporary Research Assistant at IGDS MBU, and today I'm being joined by Mrs. Blondell Mullen. Thank you for joining us. Hi, thank you for having me. Well, you are a nurse by training, retired nurse now. Yes. With an illustrious career, you also spent some time doing work with the Nurses Association. Of yes, Barbados I was the president well. of the Barbados Nurses Association for six years. Wow. Okay. So I'm sure you have a lot of knowledge that you can share with us. But first, let's get started with why you got interested in healthcare. Well, everybody always asks that question. They always find it truly. Because I know that even when you go to a play for nursing, they always ask you, where do you want to be a nurse? And everybody expects to hear a nice sweet story about having this cut and you do this thing and you had a pet that was sick. And you know. <laughs> but for me, it was non nothing like that. I actually never wanted to be a nurse. I wanted to be a secretary. I even after school, I went to the, I can't remember the name of the place, no funny enough. But I went to uh, one of the um, secretary um, schools and I did shorthand and typing. Mm -hmm. I did them to a level, um, level, and I got back in immediate with typing, but I wasn't very good with the shorthand. Right. So I completed that, and this was like two years after I finished school. And then I was home, not doing anything, and you know, you start sending out applications to different places, service commission, everything, nursing, all kinds of things, and secretary jobs. And the first thing, job opportunity that came back, was to study, no, not even the actual job, but to study to be a nurse. Mm -hmm. And to study for a nurse entailed studying for three years. And it came in your home, so you said, all right, that's something to do. So you, <laughs> you went and you did it, and they started it. And even I, I had another sister that wanted, actually wanted to be a nurse. Mm -hmm. And when she saw the monk of studying and the monk of books that I had to study from, she changed her mind. Oh, wow. And like, I can't remember if it was months, but sometime after I actually started studying to be a nurse, I got a call from a services commission to work as a civil servant. And I said, man, I hear already. Maybe this is what the Lord want me to do. Right. And I stayed on. Okay. And that was for 40 years. Wow. So and I actually have no regrets. I enjoyed nursing. So when you decided to study, where were you studying nursing? Here in Barbados, I teach in the School of Nursing, mm -hmm. and you study for three years. And at that time, too, we actually had to live in a nursing home for six months. Wow. The persons that live in the country, they could volunteer to live for the whole three years. But we that live um, close, and I, well, it was a hospital next to the hospital, then Martin Dales were, and I live in God Hill Christ Church. So that was in the bus area. Mm -hmm. So those of us that were fairly near, we could we work, it was compulsory for us to live in the nursing home for six months. But the others from St. Andrew and St. Lucy and those places, they had to live in for the whole three years. Okay. So tell me a little bit more about that three year um, period. What were some of the things that you covered? And did you grow to, love, to like nursing um, as you were studying? Yes, of course. Well, some of the, the study we thought was a bit too much. After finishing school, you thought, okay, all that studying behind you. And then realize, you have to, but you used to enjoy the different subjects and like the anatomy and learning about the different, the, all the body processes and such like. But the thing that used to get us were the conditions. When you were doing a condition, if you were say you're doing heart, a heart, heart disease, mm -hmm. the cardiac system, somebody in the classroom actually get one of these symptoms. <laughs> and then we also had to like practical, we had to, practice on ourselves, you know? Okay. We're going to the, um, they had, we, the church school had a practice area upstairs. Mm -hmm. And we would go up there doing some of the procedures on one another. And I remember, well, I had to pass an NG tube, and there's a gastric tube for feeding. 
or what can we say that you know you tell the patients these things but you have to be able to empathize with the patient right. so if you go through it you will know what a patient will because I said man you screw going down you are going to be all right but when you actually have to experience this mm -hmm. you would know what the patient is going through so you can guide the patient and I, I know and you don't really know that's something that so we put in on this tube when she was one that always up front and ready, you know? Mm -hmm. And we started putting on the tube. We said, swallow, swallow, you know, you give her some ice, you must see you swallow. Girl, I always said, swallow, she cash and cash it. And that's a girl vomited all over the <laughs> all over the place. Oh no. Never again she would want to do that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> but I know I guess an experience like that would help her to understand. Exactly, right. So when she had a patient out to pass and she chose, she could empathize with that patient and tell them, well, they know it's, they know you won't feel like you're but keep swallowing and take this piece of ice and you keep swallowing and then it actually goes down. Wow. Yes. Interesting. <laughs> Did you have to specialize or? No, you don't actually have to specialize because once you do general, general nursing, mm -hmm. that um, you do all the systems of the body, you do all the, the areas. And then we, you know, we train and we work, we work and train and work at QEH. The third study school was next to QEH, but we were still going to QEH and do the, the thing. And years ago, it was different to like now. Mm -hmm. Now the students there, I think it's almost a year or six months that they're, I think it's a year, you know, that they do a year at community college before they actually go to the QEH. But with us, we started at QEH. So we were continually at QEH. And when we actually went on the waters, we actually did the work. It wasn't like, no, they're there, they're there to observe. We actually did the work. And we were actually manning some of the wards at the hospital while we were still student nurses. Wow. We couldn't hold the keys, mm -hmm. but we, you know, we run the wards and we were charging some of the wards. Mm -hmm. And that really gave us more experience and helped us to be better nurses. Yeah, things definitely have changed. <laughs> yes, it has. Okay. So we're talking about, um, your time there still. Um, were there any like challenges that you faced or any problems that you had? Um, I've heard that people say like the perception of nurses is like, oh, you're lesser than because the doctor is like the right. real person and the doctors usually are men. So do you have, did you have any challenges when that you started is, out? We did have challenges because, well, you know, people say um, nursing, they feel nursing is, although they like you to take care of them, they still feel that nurses are lesser than everybody else in the hospital. Mm -hmm. So the doctors too, when they are trained, when they are trained as medical students, most of the time when they come on the ward, their senior doctors, the consultants don't come with them. They're there to do all the things on their own. Right. So who you think tells them what to do? Not one, the other doctors, you know, the same nurses. So we had to train doctors all through their time, we trained them and we showed them everything. We showed them how to put the IVs, everything. We showed them and tell them and all that. But when they're qualified, you know, they forget. Then they come down and they want to treat the nurses. Like we don't know nothing. Although we are the person who teach them everything they know. Mm -hmm. Then they will come in this gun like, you're just a nurse. And we used to hear, to hear that term, you're just a nurse. Right. And we know that we are more than a nurse. We mm -hmm. are more, you know, because we do so much other things. We do a lot of things that like doctors should be doing. But they get the pay and they get the recognition for it. Mm -hmm. But most of the time it's the nurses that do most of those procedures, the nurses that guide, guide them, even though they are qualified already as doctors. I don't, I'm not even talking about as medical students. But even when they are qualified as doctors, mm -hmm. it is the nurses that guide them and tell them, well, you got to do this, you got to do this. You know, show them what they have to do. And you spend more if time not, with the patients. If not, a patient. lot of patients would. <laughs> oh dear. And you, you, the nurse. you also spend more time with the patients. And right? we spend more time with patients, yes. Because nurses are with patients, especially once they're in the hospital. Nurses are there 24 hours with the patient. The doctors mm -hmm. go off and we call them. Some of you call them, especially on night duty. We call the doctors, they're on call, but they don't stay in the hospital when they're on call. Mm -hmm. You might only get the surgeons that might be actually in surgery. That everything I want, I have to come to admit patients. But they will admit the patient, they go home. So they go home and they don't get to sleep and they're sleeping strong. And you call them and they might think, it, well, it might be a straightforward thing, but it's, some things are still covered by doctors that although we as nurses can't do them, since the law says that like, doctors is doing them by words, we shouldn't be doing them. Sometimes we used to do them. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes we would take blood in the hospital. 
Right. There was it was a law that you shouldn't that nurses should not take were not covered to take blood, but like early morning, five o'clock, four o'clock, four thirty, and the patient has a hyper hypo attack. This is diabetic, right? Mm -hmm. And you can't wait now till the doctor come from home. Wait till he turn and open his eyes and decide what oh, he should go to take that blood. So we would take the blood and check the, check the patient's blood sugar, so we know if the blood sugar is high or low to give them what to give them or whatever. Mm -hmm. But we were not covering. But because of the patient, we would do it. Okay. You know? Mm -hmm. But the doctor would be there. Yeah, he would decide when he's going to come. Wow. So is that still the law? Can, blood, can nurses still not On certain right? wars, you're covered. Others, you're not covered. When you come to the polyclinic, no nurses can do bloods. We do bloods all the time at the polyclinic. We take the bloods and all that. But only on certain wars in the hospital, our nurses covered the tape blood. Okay. Yeah. Did you spend all of your time at QVH? Or did no, I didn't. I spent the majority of my time on QVH. I started at QVH. I started nursing actually in 1976. And as I told you, three years of training, which I um, qualified in 1979. Mm -hmm. And um, I stayed at QVH and worked all the, most of the wars, ICU, surgical intensive care unit, medical ICU, A3, which is one of the step down units. All those areas I worked. And in 2002, then I went over to the um, polyclinics. Okay. And Which the community health jersey. Well, I actually went to Randall Phillips and Oyster when I first left QEH. Mm -hmm. I worked there for a few years. Well, actually, I think they was there for about seven years. It's seven years, I think. And then I moved and went then to St. Philip Polyclinic and to St. John Patients Clinic. Then to Warrens. Wow. <laughs> You've been all over. Yeah. And, well, and I also were at Wilde, well, it was um, acting senior sister. I were at Wilde Polyclinic for, for a short time as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, is there any particular part of nursing that you enjoy more than others? Me nursing? Uh -huh. I, like, I enjoy surgical nursing. Okay. I really didn't like medicine. And the reason for that is that when a person comes in with a surgical problem, mm -hmm. they go to surgery, they're operated on, we get them better. Even if they come in, I, one of the things I specialize in was burn care. So patient got burned, and you know, third degree burns or whatever, and it takes a long time for them to get back to the normal, to as normal as possible. Right. And you have a lot of dressings, wound dressings to do through that time. And then the patient gets better and go home, and if you pass them in Broad Street, the patient has nursey. You look, no, you know, you can't remember them, you know. <laughs> but you can't let them know. I says, oh, you do anything. And that really makes you feel good to know that mm -hmm. that patient, you know, that you, you saw that patient at their lowest. And now they're up and moving around and look so different and so well. The thing now with medicine is that medicine is like a recurring decimal. Most of the medical problems are chronic diseases. Right. So it is really um, compliance. So the patients, you get them better. You tell them, now you go home, do this, do that, do that. Okay, nurse, okay, doc. And they go home. But as soon as they get home, you see a nice piece of sweet bread, diabetics, <laughs> or it's mango season. They know they shouldn't have mangoes. They know they shouldn't eat half a banana or half a mango. But it is mango season, and they can't eat one mango. I used to tell them, bring the other mangoes for the nurse, and you only eat one. <laughs> So at mango season, their blood sugar is going to go up. Mm -hmm. If they um, have heart condition, they might use extra fluids or whatever. Then they get edematous. That's when they have swelling in the fluid collection, all that, and the feet swollen. So then they get that way, they come back in the hospital. Wow. Again, we teach them. We do all the things we should do, and we send them home. Next few months, they're back in again. You see it. So that's why you always say never late medicine, because you know you. It's like if you're not fixing the problem, mm -hmm. well, the surgery you can't fix the problem. Okay. You know? But it all comes down to compliance. And our, our um, Barbian society think it's not very compliant. They think that it's the duty of the nurses and the doctors to um, take care of them, make right. them well. I don't have to do anything. You have to make me well. And you know it don't work that way. Exactly. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. So... We move on. Um, we talk about um, taking care of people, and you also talked about how they go in and they expect the nurse to like make you well, or maybe the doctor to just like make me better. Is there any um, other roles that you would take on, like maternal, 
um, care roles that you would find as a nurse you would have to do or would be expected to do? Well, yes. As I say, the patient, after the patient has built up a relationship with you, they kind of take you as their own. If they're young, they would think you were your, their mother or whatever. So you do build up that thing. And at the polyclinics, more so than even at the hospital. Right. Because you do the community work and you're always interacting with the patients either in the polyclinic or when you go doing your visits at the um, house, homes or the schools or wherever, mm -hmm. and you build up that relationship. So as they get a problem, they call you or they come to you. And then you treat, I actually have a lot of um, children of patients that I de either delivered or I look after the mother during the pregnancy and then after the delivery then they ask me to be their own godmother. Wow. You know? <laughs> but you always have to be teaching and advising them. And I don't mind, you know, when they come to me and ask me questions because, you know, after a while, you, know, you, you take them as your own too. Right. You know? Uh, okay. And, well, I don't know if you say this, but my husband, he, um, he thinks that I'm a nurse 24 seven. <laughs> so I'm at the hospital, especially when I was at the hospital, because I probably can't, although the work is hard, is, is that you can leave the work, you probably can work when you leave the public right. clinic. But at the hospital, it wasn't that easy, mm -hmm. especially when you're working in surgery intensive care, you are dealing with an open heart patient, patient had, who had open heart surgery. And you know, they all take so for that few hours, especially first post up evening when they come out to surgery, mm -hmm. have been doing all these things. And you, I mean, all of your nurses, we are still a bit scared because you don't want the patient to die. You don't want it to go wrong. So you're on top of everything, you know, and right. that can get you a bit tense mm -hmm. up and mm -hmm. stress. So when you finish all of that, you anxious for your shift to finish so you can breathe and say, okay, let me leave this here till they come back the next day. Right. And you go home and as you get in the house, your husband or your child will be in with a little finger prick or I used to say, <laughs> toenail hurting, you know, toenail can't really hurt. But <laughs> toenail hurting the feet as the, the world coming to an end. And you know you just left a patient there with open heart surgery that really ill. Right. And they're coming out with this toenail or whatever. And want you know to, before you put on your body to deal with it. And they said, oh Lord, let me get through the door. They said, I can't understand what kind of nurse you are. You, <laughs> you look after everybody and don't want to look after us. Oh my gosh. But, <laughs> but you know, it can be really stressed because when you get one, you want to just yeah. breathe. And then you, you got to start working fresh you now with your family or the immediate ones in the house that you're in or some relative now waiting to oh, call me when you're getting because you got this problem, you know? Right. But then you still got to put all your big boots and go and do it all over again. <laughs> oh my goodness. So even with your husband saying that, he's a part of the reason why you are always a nurse because there's always something wrong or somebody wants something to be looked at. Exactly. I also know um, that people often call on nurses and like you said, you were the president of the Barbados yeah. Nurses Association mm -hmm. for six years mm -hmm. to like come to your community, come to community events or churches and stuff to also do, right, exactly. do that kind of work. Right. Because and being a community health nurse too, we are responsible for like schools mm -hmm. and churches or anything in the community. So once they have a, some community event, we might have to go and give a, a talk, presentation on healthy lifestyle, diabetes, everything, you name it, anything. Right. And for your children, we go and tell them all about um, immunizations or you tell your children how to eat healthy and, you know, mm -hmm. um, we teach the parents, the antenatal uh, mothers and the other uh, clients too about budgeting. You name it, we do it as nurses. Budgeting for budgeting, yeah. So you have to teach them how to use your money and let the money that you have or don't have work for you. So you have to give them all those little tips. Interesting. Yes. I think I could use some of those <laughs> tips right Any now. Anytime. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that you do that. Okay. Um, as we move along, talking about your career. Um, any work that you would do in terms of like activism? So you see a lot of people with different kinds of problems. Is there any um, area of concern that would have come up for you that you would find that you were advocating about during your time? Well, actually, along with being the president of the Nurses Association, I was also involved with the National Organization of Women. I was actually an executive member. I was a secretary at one time, and then later the public relations officer. Mm -hmm. So I have attended many of sessions on 
domestic violence and also um, we did rallies, now did rallies on, on domestic gender violence and I did as a nurse, I did a presentation on the physical effects of domestic violence because not people think of the the just that well, okay she get it but don't realize how it affects the woman in the whole mm -hmm. her whole physical um outcome because she might be able to stress then you know she have to um she might develop a condition like right. say a peptic ulcer or something from just the stress of the home situations you mm -hmm. know all that we have to deal with and then the physical thing that like if she get bruised or thing or oh, any disfigure we have to go then a coach her how to put it with this whatever mm -hmm. disability she may have because of the violence you know okay did you also have to do that work within the hospital outside of now mm -hmm. like we, we, uh, in the polyclinics yes because in polyclinics too we have to go and and do all that when we are sometimes if any of that any we are responsible as a poly health nurse we have different areas every nurse is assigned an area in the parish right so you have your your area so anything that happens in that area in that parish mm -hmm. in that area that you're responsible for you have to go once it happens they will call you you have to go so right. if it's a domestic um thing that happened you have to go and do your research help the, the woman or whatever mm -hmm. so you have to be involved okay yeah. did so you that's find part that, of that did you find that work as taxing as um, Sometimes depending on what it is, because as I say, once you know that a person is hurting and you get involved, you're going to hurt too. Right. You know, so it becomes a part of you. Mm -hmm. And you can't just do it today and think it's going to be, you got by next day and check. And as I say, the same client will call you back again if she has more problems right. or she just want to talk. Right. So you got to get involved. And it do, you know, takes its toll on you as well. Exactly. But, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, a, it's also a part of healthcare, but one that yeah. we often don't think about. Exactly, exactly. Did you become involved with now through that kind of work, or were you interested in no, like, I, well, the I, issues from before? From before I was involved then, so then we just continue with that as well. Okay. Yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. All right. So we're doing quite well. Um, any um, influential women that kind of shaped the course of your career and your life? Well, over the 40 years, there were many women mostly associated with nursing. And you can think of people like um, Ina Walters, who was the uh, first matron of the Queen Elizabeth Hospital. Ina Walters, not the wrong about yes. what his name after her. And then, well, I didn't actually work with them Nita, as a nurse. Mm -hmm. But then I had, um, when she was the governor general, you know, then we would do certain nurse activities and she was involved. So we always looked up to her, knowing that her background was nursing because she was a nurse first, remember? Yes. Yes, yes, both here and overseas. And then, well, this didn't, this, I only because of reading and being involved in nursing that I would, we have heard of Mary Seacole. Mary Seacole is like the Florence Nightingale of the West Indian Caribbean because mm -hmm. she's a Jamaican. Right. But you know, we always hear of Florence Nightingale and everything is Florence Nightingale. And I always laugh because I remember we were doing our research in nursing. They said that Florence was not a real nurse and she really, she didn't used to do nursing things, that she just used to walk with the lab. And you know the men, the mm -hmm. men would just get excited seeing a woman coming through, walking with train with them. So that's all that used to make the fellas get better. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> so we said, but it's not about Florence, but you have people like Mary Seacole, right. you know, that did a lot of things in nursing as well that mm -hmm. we can emulate. So those were the outstanding women that everybody know for nursing, but then there were some ladies in my life that have, um, influenced me as I came through nursing. And I can mention people like Rachel Welch, that was one of my senior nurses. When I first was, I was through the nurse, when I first graduated on Ward A3. And then we had people like Mia Ford and Jean Brownwall and Amy Lane. Mm -hmm. She was uh, actually the system matron, but she died a few years ago. And then we have in the nurse, Nurses Association, there were people that helped to push me to get involved in more in job in um, nursing, in the Nurses Association. People like Angela Crawford and Maria Howard and Ms. Flynn Denning and um, Eileen Hunt, who was one of our trustees mm -hmm. up to quite recently. All of them were um, nursing stalwarts. And then in the National Organization of Women, I w was involved with presidents like um, Gloria Bailey, Nalita Jadar and Yvonne Watts 
and quite recently Marilyn Race Boy. Mm -hmm. And politically, although I'm not affiliated with any political party, and I used to always say that, but you know, in Barbados, once you say you like somebody, that means you're a yeah. member of the party. But I'm not a member of any party in Barbados. But I'm always, um, I always am more me, I'm more Marty. Mm -hmm. And of course, over the years, there'll be many nurses and women that really excel, and I am a try to emulate them, and I'm very proud of them, but right now I don't remember, but <laughs> I always push forward with me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. Um, but I guess you can also see how people look up to you as a woman who is influential yes, and, and has done great work right. for and Actually, as the president of the Nurse Association over the, past, over the last six years, it actually was only, it was so from uh, February, but for the last six years from February, though, and over these six years, I really enjoyed being the president of the Nurses Association. And the people that I came into, with, into contact with, not only nurses, but even in the general public, actually they went up to, um, I think it was St. Martin's Bay. Mm -hmm. And this lady was looking at me all the time, and I look at her, and I said, I know, I said, just about his patient. So I thought maybe she was one of my patients. Right. So she looked at me, she's smiling, and then I went, I said, um, she said, hi, how are you? And I said, and I said, she said, you don't, you don't know. I said, no, you or something like that. I said, she said, no, you don't know me. You know you're from TV. <laughs> <laughs> and I was surprised because I didn't even think of that, that people just know you know from being on TV and not actually patients. I said, oh, well, maybe everybody know me now rather than even a patient, you know. Mm -hmm. But I enjoy being in the President Nurses Association and doing training to get things um, improved for the nursing. And sometimes I feel like if I haven't achieved a lot because when I look back, there's still a big shortage of nurses and mm -hmm. don't seem to be able to increase the numbers of nurses. And every day nurses still complain that they need help because the workload is so much and there are so few of them, you mm -hmm. know. And then, you know, nurses work on sociable hours. Actually, I was going to say something that I remember this days, that as a nurse and a mother and having a household, that is really stress as well, and, but you have to be able to cope, mm -hmm. you know. And working shift work and then coming home to do all the things you have to do as a mother and a wife. But, oh dear, I forget what I was going to say. But um, nurses do all these things and they don't get uh, remunerations for it. It's true. You know, they mm -hmm. don't. And we have been pushing also for nurse practitioners. As I said, just we teach the doctors. Midwives can, you, you don't need no doctors. You just need a midwife to deliver babies. You don't need a doctor, you know. But nurses don't get paid for being all these specialists. Mm -hmm. I specialize in ICU, critical care nursing, but they do not pay nurses for specialize in these areas in Barbados. Right. They do overseas, but we've been pushing for them to pay nurse practitioners for years, and they don't do it. They would not do it. Well, but we keep pushing, we keep pushing. We keep pushing. <laughs> yeah. And on that um, note, any sort of final words or messages that you would have for women right now in Barbados? Well, I would just say, I would tell them to reach for the stars. My philosophy is whatever is to be, will be. Mm -hmm. And if you try to, to, to succeed in something and you find something blocks, don't let that stop you because sometimes you don't even know why things don't always work. I may not be the Lord's will for that particular thing right. that happened, but keep on striving, jump over the obstacles, but keep striving and you will reach the stars. Perfect. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, it was a pleasure. You were watching Voices of Women. I am Leanne Worrell, and we were joined by Mrs. Blondell Mullen. Thank you for watching UETV. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed this program. Remember, you can watch this and all our programs on our website, www.uetv.org, available anytime, anywhere, and on any device. Also, join the conversation on social media by visiting our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram pages.